Every year, thousands of hunters come west to chase elk around the mountains, and some of you are gonna be lucky enough to be hunting off horses. Now, for those of you who haven't spent a whole lot of time around horses, they can be pretty intimidating, and rightly so. They're big, powerful animals. So I'm gonna give you a couple of tips to keep in mind for your next hunting adventure. first approach a horse you don't need to approach them straight onto their face you need to come right up to their shoulder throw an arm around the top of their neck then get your lead rope and put over get it right up here behind their ears once you got them like this they're pretty much caught then you can put your halter on you need to be standing beside them at all times put that on this is a rope halter. You'll find a, a couple of different configurations. I like these because they're really light. They're strong. Get that knot settled up right under their chin. And there you got him. Now when you're leading the horse, you don't want to lead them with a real long lead rope like this. You know, they can step over that. It gives them too much leeway. The, it, the horse will learn that uh, if, they're if they're led uh, with a long lead rope and they're allowed to take advantage of somebody, they'll, they'll do it. They'll learn to do that and before long they'll be leading you uh, and, and that's a situation you don't want to get into. So when you're leading your horse, um, grab them right up underneath the chin like this and just maintain a short lead on them and you can make them go wherever you want. Now I'm going to show you what you do not want to do when you're approaching a horse, and I see a lot of people doing it uh, with a lead rope, is they'll, they'll come at them like this, and they try, to, tr they try to come straight to them like that. And a horse is a prey animal. When you come straight at them like that, trying to put something on their face, they see that as a sign of um, danger or a threat, and they're just gonna wanna back away from you. So you always want to come to that shoulder, put your arm around them, um, and then catch them that way. So I've got my paint here tied on a high line, and I'm going to go ahead and just tie socks here to this tree. Now, uh, normally I wouldn't advise tying a horse to a tree for very long, but we're just going to tie him here for just a few minutes while we throw a saddle on him. Um, if you tie a horse to a tree like this for you know any length of time at all they're going to get bored and start pawing and they'll make a, a donut around this tree and if you leave them there for very long they'll paw the roots up and end up killing the tree um, but just tying them here for a few minutes while we're saddling it'll be just fine now when you go to tie a horse there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind horses do not do well when they're tied down low they need to be tied at least chin high if not higher um, what happens is um, these horses are pretty calm and you can get away with a lot more with these guys than you can with a lot of horses but even still uh, if a horse feels pressure holding his head down a lot of times they're gonna spook and they're gonna pull back on that thing and uh, horses are big powerful animals if they pull back like that they can hurt themselves they can hurt you and if in the worst case scenario if you've got them tied to something that's not uh, secure like a snag or a, a log or something like that if they start pulling back and that thing breaks and comes to them you've got an absolute rodeo on your hands and they're just gonna keep backing up and they they're gonna hurt somebody or hurt themselves so make sure you tie them up high this tree has a little branches which is gonna hold this uh, hold this lead rope up if I'm tying to a lodge pole or something like that that doesn't have a branch I'm gonna make two wraps before I tie my knot just to make sure that this doesn't slip down and end up down here because then you're back into that situation where they're tied low. I'm going to tie 
just a little easy little slip knot with a quick release so just basically you're tying a square knot around the main line there cinch that up around the tree now I've got this little tail hanging here so if something does happen something happens to spook him all I've got to do is pull that and he's loose so I've got my saddle here I'm gonna go ahead and throw my saddle on there first thing you want to do is just brush them off a little bit you know if you got them tied in the timber um, they can get sticks and stuff stuck in their hide and that's not real comfortable if that's under a under a blanket for very long so I'll throw your blanket up there and start kind of high on their withers and then you can slide that back and that just keeps all that hair pointed in the right direction now I'm gonna throw my saddle on there now when you throw your saddle on there you got to give it a pretty good little little fling to kind of get it up over their back and over their withers you want this uh, the stirrup and the girth and all that stuff to go over the top of them the saddles not sitting on it give it a good little shake to settle it down there this near side stirrup you can throw over the saddle horn to get it out of the way and I need to let this girth down on the other side now Socks has a habit he's a pretty smart horse he'll uh, when I'm when you're saddling him up he'll blow up he gets a big breath of air and so when you're tightening the saddle he's he's all full of air and then once you walk away from him, he lets it out and he's left with a loose saddle on him and that's not an uncommon trait in horses they'll figure that stuff out but uh, to get around it you know once you walk him around a little bit you can kind of surprise him just reach down here and cinch that sucker up where it needs to be So I'm going to go ahead and, and put my bridle on socks. Now there again, you don't want to come at them, you know, and try to put them on like that. You see how he's immediately just starts to back up. You want to come back around to their side like this. Put your hand over their neck, just like you did when you put their halter on. Now, sometimes I'll just leave the halter on if I'm going to be out hunting and I want to tie the horse up, but I'm going to go ahead and take it off for this. Go ahead and throw your reins up over their neck and for putting a bridle on it's helpful if you put your hand kind of right between their ears like that and grab it and then grab the the bit and get it right where their teeth come together and they should open the ma their mouths and then just slip that right over their ears When you get on a horse, when you make the commitment to get on, you got to just go ahead and do it. You can't be trying to, you know, hang on the saddle and pull yourself up. Um, a lot of people grab hold to the saddle and put their foot in the stirrup and just kind of pull themselves up and, and hang on the saddle. Um, that's not the way you want to do it. You want to go ahead and put your foot in the stirrup, grab your reins. You want to make sure you always have your reins. Woo and then grab your saddle horn and just just give you a little pop and hump, get right up there Ooh. Ooh. when you get up you want to get your weight up over the top of that horse and the top of that saddle as quick as you can you don't want to be over here hanging on the side of the saddle so go ahead and get up there and get your weight over and swing your leg over and there you got it now normally you'd get on the left hand and get off the left hand side of a horse uh, on a on a calm horse you can get off they'll let you do whatever you want and a lot of times if I'm on steep country I'll get off on whatever side is the uphill side just because it's easier <laughs> 